Feast of Alegria is made up of 55 performers from 18 different countries who speak a total of 10 different languages. We're kind of like a little mini United Nations, if you will, and not everybody speaks the same level of English, uh, and so we have you know, different ways of communicating, but you would be absolutely amazed at the friendships that are formed from different countries and different continents, and, and you know, the way people find ways to relate to each other. It's, it's really phenomenal. Most of these performers are former Olympic athletes or World Cup and international competitors like Maxim Kotenko. Maxim is from the Ukraine. He's not only a performer, He's a coach, too. He's been with Alegria for three and a half years now. I love the show. I love the people who stay in here. I love my job. I love to have the adrenaline every day and, you know, the audience and uh, travel. Well, he definitely gets to do a lot of that. Alegria spends a week in 40 different cities every year. You live out of a suitcase, you're in a different hotel, you know, a different state every week. Um, I can't tell you where we were three weeks ago. I... As you can see, Alegria combines breathtaking acrobatics with daring feats of strength, skill, and speed. It's not just acrobatics, you know, it's a, it's a show. Even the Alegria stage has its own personality. It takes 18 semis to transport it, and once it gets there, it takes 80 people more than 10 hours to assemble it. The quickest time they've ever taken it down, two and a half hours. It's its own show. It really is its own show to watch how it goes together and how it comes apart. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's an absolute ballet, and it's precision. It we'll hire anywhere from 75 to 100 people to help us out and float in, and then the same number to load the show out. And every week it's a different layout, so loading doors can be somewhere else, and, and accessibility is different, and sometimes you unload one truck at a time, sometimes you get to unload four, so they have to be constantly thinking on their feet, okay, what's the best way to do this? It's never boring, without a doubt, uh, and that's, which is fun, because if we're in the same place to me, I, you know, you kind of get into a routine, and uh, it wouldn't be a challenge for me. After the stage is assembled, it's time to put it to the test. Since every arena is different, it takes skill to make sure the stage doesn't change. We do what we call acrobatic adjustments. So all day, every act goes on stage. And they go on stage because when they get to the, the stage and they have an audience, the last thing we want them to do is whether or not the rope is in the right place or the light's in the right place or if their sound doesn't sound right. Every single act goes on stage before the audience to make sure that they're okay. Because the last thing we want them to, we, what they do is crazy and it's cool and we want to make sure that they're focused on what they need to do. Mike even has to be concerned about the time of year they're setting up. And uh, whether or not uh, it's hockey season or if it's winter outside or if it's summer outside, making sure that the humidity doesn't change too much, whether or not it's not too hot. Because the, the trapeze and the high bar are 45 feet in the air. So obviously heat rises, so we have to make sure that it's warm enough on stage but not too high in the, in the ground. So there's always challenges working with that as well. bring in three and a half thousand, four thousand people, obviously all the body temperatures and all that, so you have to kind of guess on how it's got to change when you open up the door. So yeah, it's a pretty good challenge, but we like it. While some performers are on stage, others are using the full gym set up behind the stage to practice. Although they've done this show hundreds of times, these athletes routinely work out with their coaches. The most important practice for us is Wednesday because uh, it's a new city, it's a new venue, new arenas, and uh, you know, we need to check everything, the structures, the lights. It's different space, like, you know, uh, in arenas, some arenas are so big, and we need to adapt for this. And we have only, like, one hour and 15 minutes to do everything. One of the biggest challenges these artists face is making the show feel fresh and new, as though they're doing it for the very first time. We try to inspire and challenge the artists because, you know, they do the show eight times a week, right? And we do a 10-week leg, so that's 80 performances. So you want to keep it fresh. You want to keep it interesting. The artists themselves work hard to keep the show exciting by doing little things to help them get energized. We're trying to joke. Uh, we're trying to have some funny dance before we go in on stage because... We need to feel ourselves like, you know, very, very good and not boring. We need to be happy to do our job very good. Some of the performers even play games like this backstage. Even though they're some of the best in the world, these artists never stop trying to improve. After each performance, they gather around a TV backstage to critique themselves.
It's not just their stunts these performers have to worry about. They're also responsible for how they look on stage. For a show like this, with characters that appear to be from another world, that's no easy feat. Well, we do our makeup ourselves, and uh, it takes around 45 minutes. Even though the show has been touring since 1994, it continues to change as new performers join and others move on to other jobs. So if you've seen it before, that doesn't mean you've actually seen it. You know, they work on new tricks, they work on new skills. We let them show us what they can do and maybe we can find ways to put that in the show. It's like any real like live performance, right? Even if you have set things that have to be within the show, the, the talent pool changes. You know, we replace artists. Uh, so there's constant movement within the show. And so therefore, you know, we, we, we discover new things. You know, we have a great act called Power Trap. More difficult moves and whatnot. The artists are, um, they're, they're inspirational, you know, and, and working with them every day is the best, it, it's, it's the best brain food. Because they spend so much time on the road together, these performers experience something others don't. Well, we create this new family, I would say, the, the Alegria family. So we, we take care of each other. And, and we're a very tight-knit group. So one of the great things about it is everyone helps each other. So if someone's English isn't as good, you know, even though they may not speak the same language otherwise, they're going to help each other out. And, and there, is, there is a real camaraderie, there is a real respect uh, for the cultures. And, and there's also, you know, a real understanding. Because they're a traveling troupe, this group faces even more challenges than some of the other permanent shows. They travel with a half dozen washers and dryers and four full-time wardrobe staff just to maintain and repair the 600 costume pieces used in the show. We need to maintain the integrity of the costumes that were designed by Dominique Lemieux. So we need to have people on site to make sure that they're clean, that they're back in the different road cases where they need to be, and then when they get any kind of damage to them that they're maintained in a pristine condition. When you watch the kinds of stunts these artists undertake, you can see how this could definitely become a full-time job. And this is the one where they're jumping on the trampoline and sliding across the floor, and as you see, there's a lot of intricate detail to it. But this is also a lame fabric, which means that it's made with gold threads. So they get a lot of wear and tear and abuse. So we're constantly replacing the dots. Well, in reality, even four full-time employees aren't enough to keep up. And then when we get to town, we hire two locals to help us with laundry and to help us with ironing and steaming and pressing and all the miscellaneous things that go into having the costumes ready for the show. Every costume is custom-made for the person who wears it. They're hand detailed with beautiful embellishments like lace, feathers, sequins, and rhinestones. The costumes for the white and black singers have more than 200 hand sewn jewels alone. Things that are built with a lot of hand, hand sewing and a lot of love, and there's a lot of intricate detail. These bird masks seen on the old birds of the show take 200 hours each to create. The bird costumes are made specifically for that artist. So each artist has their own costume, their own character that they're fitted with when they're in Montreal. All of the makeup that's on the masks is applied by an actual makeup artist as if it's a real person, so that all of the detail and all of that stuff is all hand done, uh, as well as all of the individual. You see some of the beading in some of the females, the eyelashes. All of that stuff is absolutely is applied very individually and you know it's, it's quite time consuming so you can imagine the amount of detail that goes into these things and the amount of time that goes into creating you know one of our bird characters. Alegria also travels with a full-time cook to make sure these artists get the food they need to keep them in peak performance. The first Cirque show began in Canada in 1984 with 73 employees. The company now employs more than 5,000 people. 2,000 of which are at the home office in Montreal. Right now, there are 21 different shows going on simultaneously around the world. Alegria is more than a show. It's an experience, an experience that's meant to be shared. I would say that a show of Cirque du Soleil is, is really for the entire family. And if you want to have a full two hours and a half that you keep in, in mind, and actually you will sing the song right after the show, 
it's a really good gift. It's a unique piece, you will see, and, and then you're transported in, in this world of Cirque du Soleil. For us, it's Alegria, but all the 21 shows touring around the world this year are different and they each have their own story. You can bring your, your six-year-old, you can bring your grandmother, and everybody has kind of a different experience, and so it's something you can really share. Each Cirque show has its own theme. Alegria is the Spanish word for elation, joy, and jubilation and tells the story of evolution and the passing of time. Uh, Cirque du Soleil, its mandate, its mission is uh, to create and evoke emotion. I think it's a humble and pure mission. What we produce is very unique and, and it is for the audience. We do it for the audience. So we, we need to make sure that the audience goes away going, wow, that was amazing. And it doesn't matter whether they've seen one Cirque show or 10, they have to go away going, wow, that was amazing. Thank you.